a customer question about um, servers that need the um, real IP address of the FQDN embedded in the payload. So the example was something like a, a SQL query where the SQL connection string um, actually connects to the IP address um, but embeds the IP address in the connection string and the server needs to see that IP address in the connection string. Um, most of the time um, the solution would be to um, change the server um, or change the connection to always be an FQDN and we'll, we'll return the synthetic IP address in zero trust. Um, you don't want to expose that IP address um, to the end client. It, it's a, a security principle in terms of not being able to know the real IP address of the server, not being able to know IP addresses of the network and um, keeping uh, users off the network is a key tenant of zero trust. But, you know, the, we have to be pragmatic. There are legacy applications and they're configured in a certain way and they take time to, to go through and remediate and we have to, to think about these things. Um, so in, in my case, uh, as an example, I've got an application which is called dc2.welshgeek.net um, and for example, the server needs to see the real IP address, the client needs to see the real IP address and we want to be really specific about this. Um, and I can always connect to the real IP address. I can define an app segment, 192.168.1.14, and connect to it. Um, but how do I do it where the client does the DNS resolution? Um, so the, the client's configured for an FQDN, um, get the real IP address resolved, um, and then connect to that real IP address and embed that real IP address in the connection string. So what I've done here, I've created that FQDN, um, and what I've said to it is always bypass this FQDN. And what the always bypass means is that Zscaler client connector will never intercept that FQDN and ask ZPA about it. It means that the client will never get that 164 synthetic IP address for it. Um, but if they connect to the IP address 192.168.1.14, then it's allowed, it passes through the client forwarding policy. Okay, so this is kind of get your head around this, what's actually going to happen. Um, and so what I'm going to do, because I bypassed this FQDN, the Zscaler Client Connector for ZPA doesn't do any intercept, and the client will then try and resolve it locally. And the resolve locally means that it actually queries the DNS server, Client Connector then intercepts the DNS and sends it to Zscaler Internet Access because that's the trusted resolver. And so now in Zscaler Internet Access, I can create a policy that says um, for a category, Zscaler two, uh, DC2, which is actually just that one FQDN, I want it to return the real IP address uh, or this configured IP address, 192.168.1.14. So now I've solved the resolution problem. The client gets that 192.168.1.14 address and therefore they can make the connection to that host. So I'll show you how that works. Um, if I ping dc2.welshgeek.net, I get that uh, 192.168.1.14 address. Now, um, the, the policy still says I can only connect to that on port 3389. And if I ping my other things, dc, uh, dc3.welshgeek.net, if I could not fat finger it, um, I will get, still get that synthetic address. So I'm still on ZPA for that. Um, and so now if I come across to my um, remote desktop, I've got my uh, setting here just to demonstrate what's going on, dc2.welshgeek.net, um, and it'll connect, and I get connected to the server. Now if I come across to um, my uh, diagnostics here, I can see that um, the connections are to 192.168.1.14 on port 3389. So as far as Zscaler is concerned, it's hitting that, uh, ZPA is concerned, it's hitting that, um, the segment based on the IP address and it therefore matches that uh, IP address segment. So uh, ways to get around the interception, getting those synthetic IP addresses, we're gonna use a combination of ZIA and ZPA to, to, to push the, the real IP address down to the client 
and, and spoof that uh, connection and give it uh, the real, real IP address to get through to the client. I hope this is useful. Mark at zscaler.com.